It's been a hot minute. Let's get started on the fuselage for this EMHW 47% pit special. Welcome everybody back to the channel. I'm Brennan. Thanks for joining me again here for another episode down in the lair. I can't wait to get started on this fuse. It's been a hot minute since uh, we've worked on the pit special. We've done the decathlon. Number two, we've done the turbine Avanti uh, Mini Avanti, both of those from Gator RC, and we've done a couple other projects along the way. But we've gotten the verticals done. The horizontals are done. The upper wings are done. The lower wings are done. And by done, with German directions, I mean about 90% done. Still need to cover, still need to do horns, access, things like that, access panels, but I don't want to finalize stuff until we have fitment in place. So, that being said, enough yip yap, let's get to building. So the fuse is designed to build up together fairly quickly. Uh, we're going to use an oscillating cutting tool, one of my favorite, especially with dealing with thick uh, plywood here. But we're going to use the oscillating tool to just go ahead and cut out all that framework. And then we labeled all the pieces by the plans. So you go ahead and you start by making a base and then we build our formers. Uh, make sure they're square. Once those are drying in the base jig, you can start to assemble the nose as you see that we did here. And basically you're just putting everything in its jig-like puzzle spot. And uh, once that dries, you add it to the formers. All right guys, a couple things here worth noting as we go forward. Um, so this is that rear vertical piece on the plane. One of the things that they want you to do, I'm just test fitting that just to show you guys something, is we have to mount in our servos and drill our holes because it's hard to do that um, once all of this is put together. Now, I, I don't want to have elevator servos installed in there now that are going to live there forever. So I will find a way to access those at some point whether I got to put a hatch a panel something just so I can get those in and out um, but I am going with big pro modeler servos and these will probably use 800 inch ounce servos they might be overkill but I'm okay with that so we're gonna install pre-drill those now now with that being said <clears throat> let's talk about the tailpiece so this piece is gonna slide in there like that they want you to have four millimeters sticking out when we put this together and these are the back pieces 19 and 20 so we got to make sure that these are installed correctly in the right way they don't go on the outside they go underneath and get glued on but you'll notice as you do that if we make that top piece there line up so it's flush underneath when we get to the back that's going to stick out and we don't want to sand half of this off, so what we want to do is chamfer that inside edge so that way they hit that angle. So we're going to do some sanding on 19 and 20 on both sides so we can epoxy all that together. And because these are um, super important surfaces, just like we did the engine box, we're using 9462 high uh overnight epoxy. I want it to be super strong. So time lapse. Again, we start to use epoxy, high sol 9462 here on the tail. We get the tail set into place. It starts to join into our formers in the back of the plane. And then we'll start to put in our longer rods to connect everything together. One of the biggest things here is just to make sure that everything is vertical and 90 degrees with each other as it should be. But everything builds within that base jig. So it really helps you to kind of keep things aligned. All right, so it's easier to show you this here so you understand in the time lapse what we're doing. This stringer here, longer on, got to go in. And this is hard pine, if you will. 
but because the sheeting of the ply comes up on the side you got to notch this out right here to create it's like three millimeter to four millimeter difference you got to rip that out then you have to angle it here so not only is it angled this way then it angles that way to get a nice fit so we have one of these we're going to do for the other side now and then ultimately you got to bring it back taper it into the tail and then we're also going to have to notch out here where the servo comes up servo openings already no fit so not a big deal i want this to be pretty precision so we'll notch that out later now it's time to glue this piece <clears throat> onto the top of the turtle deck framing now this whole piece needs to actually go back a little bit because the wood is just tensioned or warped or whatever um, but what i'm going to do you'll notice these two strips here for the turtle deck one is much wider than the other obviously the wider one's going to get glued on to here and then once the rudder is on we're going to just pull this whole assembly backwards <clears throat> and latch it into place and then let it shape that way so let's get this thing glued down held into place um, then we're going to sheet the sides once that's all sanded then we'll put that thinner piece on the top glue it completely sheet that portion of the turtle deck get it to line up with the rudder and then also here in the front we're going to use a laser to get all the way down to the center we're going to use this jig to sit over the top we're going to sand all this smooth and then we have to uh, drill holes into this thing and then this jig will fit right there in order to help us line up that front cabane um, or center mount for the wings so lots of time lapse let's do it so those sanding bars i got from ebay there are companies out there they're called longboard sanding bars you can get them in whatever length you want and then you just use sticky sandpaper on the bottom of them they work pretty good they're fairly inexpensive um, so now you see that we're setting that cabane in the center using their jig. I use laser placement on everything to make sure it's nice and straight for the front part of it and the aft part that it doesn't tail off to the right or left, that it stays perfectly straight and it aligns with the center of our formers going down the plane. Lasers are very handy when it comes to building and making sure everything stays in a straight line. Here we just laid out each of the three pieces for each side of the turtle deck sheeting. We've already sanded down the top portion of the turtle deck so it's at the right angle and now we're going to put the sheeting over it. It worked out best to take all three pieces and use tight bond in one of our Amazon syringes just to glue everything together on some wax paper as you can see that I just did there. And once these are dry then we can kind of lay them and shape them over the back half of the turtle deck. All right, guys, a lot going on in this step. We've used the laser right there to make sure that our center cabane is in line with the formers going all the way down through. And we've roughed in the tail. <laughs> That's awesome. Um, just to make sure that things are kind of lining up the way they we want them to. Now, there's this space right here where this thing needs to be glued to there before you sheet it. We've sanded this all nice and smooth, but I'm going to pull this whole thing back into the rudder and epoxy it into place before I sheet it. If you sheet it and try and pull it, then you're screwed. It ain't going anywhere. So we want to go ahead and glue this in. We have to make sure things are copacetic, but I need to make sure that these lower longer rods that go in here are um, put in exactly how they're supposed to be in the right spot there's a lot of forming that needs to go on here because not only does this sit in the bottom against there there's no notch for it there's like a spot for it but there's no notch to hold it into place and then this piece 
here is going to need to be curved in and glued in place, which we could also do later. But we need to form all the way back. And the question really was here on the tail, did this longer on go here? Did it go here? Did it go in the inside? So what I've determined by looking through pictures, plans, and deciphering is this needs pulled out. It needs flex because there is a 5x5 five five brace that needs to sit on this on the inside. So they're tapered in the back, if you can see that, on both sides. So they sit up against the rudder post. And we're going to epoxy those into place out there because then that gives us space for our tail wheel and tail wheel bracket. They can't be that narrow. So that's going to come out like that and then be spaced appropriately and all this stuff epoxied into place. Once those are in, we're putting in strips here, strips here. Shorter of the two goes in the back. The longer one uh, will come in here to the front. So we're going to do that as well. And we're going to do that on both sides. Once those are in, we could put in our rudder tray. That can get epoxied into place. And I think at that point, we're ready to do the tail. I've already kind of checked this to make sure everything is centered and square and perpendicular. And that's all great. I can get to uh, achieve that using these mounts and stuff here and the laser. So that's all good. But anyway, a lot going on in the time lapse. So um, let's get started. Now we're just rough shaping for our smoke tank and our fuel tank. Those are 1,000 milliliter tanks each, and we want to make sure that they have a nice tight fit. The thing that holds those in is the cap, so we have to make sure that the front cap is accessible. You actually put the fuel tank in through the formers, then you put the caps on them, and it holds them into place. Now we go to glue in the tail, the vertical portion, and to make sure that it's perfectly straight with our center cabane and the center of the plane, we use a laser. Sometimes it was easier to turn the lights off and uh, make sure that everything was nice and straight. It was easier to see the laser that way. Here we're just adding the round stock cross bracing on the inside of the plane. This really helps to uh, strengthen up the fuselage. All right, guys, so we've gone ahead and we've thrown the wings up on here. A um, couple things that we'll start to cover. Before we get too far into installing our sheeting on the turtle deck and then our last piece, I wanted to start to look at the way that things fit together before I got too far. And what started this was the tail. So one of the things that <clears throat> we want to do is you want to use strings to check certain angles and distances so to make sure the tail before ever all the epoxy cured uh, we went ahead and we marked center line here of our deck and from there to this corner and then from here to the opposing corner should be exactly the same so not only is everything set with the laser but we know that the tail's not this way or this way fore or aft twisted on one side versus the other everything's perfectly parallel and perpendicular there right so now it comes down to making sure the wings fit um this wing here has a little gap there not much here so when we're dealing with this stuff fit and finish it could be absolutely perfect and that would be great in an ideal world but unfortunately that's just not the way things go when you build so we're going to have a little bit of gap the rotation pins or anti-rotation pins stick plenty through there so i'm not worried about the wings coming out the only thing that holds these wings on is flying wires and i don't really like that idea so there's a couple things that i'm going to do number one here uh, with the wing we can use wood and plug the end of the wing tube, drill a hole through it and put a screw through the bottom that we could take in or out. Or I can go ahead and uh, do what I did. I drilled a hole there and one on the other side. We're gonna install just some blind nuts in here and we're gonna use nylon screws just to hold it in. And that's actually gonna pull this into place. And what I did here is I had to um, open up the, let me pull this off here so you could see 
set you guys up. So the wing tube and stuff isn't glued in yet, but what I wound up doing is I ovaled this wing tube hole out a little bit so I could shift the wing tube back. That allows this wing to go this way, the front one to go front a little bit. And that gave me a nice mix because we have to use another string up top. And all I do is I set a piece of tape on there that I could slide up and down and we check it. I can use the other one here. And basically what I do is I just set the spacing so you can take this piece here and it goes to the corner of the wing right there and then it should be equal on the other side. So I had to open this up like a sixteenth of an inch in order to get everything right. And then these holes here, what I'm going to do is I'll fish a blind nut through that side, I'll epoxy it and put it in. That way as the wings are here, it's tight, but it also helped to pull this wing in there and tuck it against the fuselage a little bit. Now as the wing tubes, or as this wing sets in there, we actually have um, this dressing piece that'll go on over the top. So it doesn't really matter for spacing as long as your anti-rotation pins are in, everything will be covered and you won't see anything regardless. So um, off camera, we're gonna clean up some of this stuff. We're gonna put in our blind nut and um, get this thing ready to set the bottom wings perfect. And then uh, these things here, we have to make sure that no directions on the cabanes. It almost looks our wing struts it almost looks like there's a hole there and a hole there that we have to put some threaded inserts into in order to um, get everything to fit. But I need to get the bottom straight before I can deal with the top because there's this weird issue I have here um, with these wings. I got this that I have to take up. And uh, I consulted with a good friend of mine, John Tabaretti. He's built a 60% um, version of this thing. But there's so much going on with movement here, not only up and down, but back and forth. So you really need something to reference this to. The bottom's easy to set. So I'm going to set the bottom, and then we're going to deal with this up top because there are spacers they give you here. These phenolic rings need to go into place. And some of this needs to be taken up. And I haven't done a final fit or finish on anything yet because that's what we're doing now. So we're just trying to square things up to make sure it's square as we build. And uh, that way we don't do anything we can't undo. So let's keep plugging along. I'll update you in a minute. All right. So uh, wing tube is in place. It's beveled out like I had talked about. So we opened it up here a little bit. We'll fill that in epoxy on the back side. Wing bolts are in to hold this thing nice and sturdy. Here is our string wrapped to the center point of the tail, which we now know is true. And basically this is what we do. We stretch this out. We get to the edge of the wing there and it is exactly the same on the other side. So any gaps, like I still have a little bit of a gap in here. Again, that'll be covered, but what I'm gonna do is I'm just gonna go ahead and get a little bit of sheeting and I'll just fill that in so that way that's fully supported up against the side of the fuselage. Um, otherwise, let's go ahead and add some epoxy and we'll call that a day. Now, the other thing that needs to happen is there's some cross braces that are round uh, balsa that need to go in here underneath that. So we'll probably do that at the same time. All right, when we set the tail on, there's a lot that goes into making sure that this thing is going to fly right. And by that, I mean setting the incidence. So one of the things we want to do is make sure that that our horizontal stabs are good this way. So we make sure that we have that string measurement from a center point of the fuselage back to corner and that it's the same on each side. And then we use incidence meters, and I hope that you guys can see that maybe with the laser. Um, we have those set on both sides. So that's measuring like, is that horizontal stab given elevator or not? And uh, when I initially fit this thing on there, it looked like it was. So we had to just kind of work at it to get everything where we need to. And then I have the other laser set up in the back. So you can see right across the back of the horizontal that's good as well so we know that everything is level this way we know the fuselage is level you could see the level on top of the wings there just making sure that that's straight and that's for my eyeballs because the one thing that you can't 
forget about after you use all this technology to make sure stuff straight is just by putting your eyeballs straight down the center of it. So as long as everything looks pretty plumb and square and straight to me, guys, it should fly as good as it gets. Um, incidence meters help. We got to zero them on the fuselage first. So basically we take a level spot, which is going to be right here on the cockpit. I'll show you what that looks like. All we do to make sure that this is level, set it on a level surface and make sure that we have a zero. Hopefully you guys can see the lasers on the zero. So that is zeroed out. Now on this one, you have to make sure that that laser is all the way out at the end. Um, that's exactly 20 inches apart. That's by design. So anyway, um, everything has its little set of instructions, but these things are really valuable. So glad I still got them. Um, they aren't available anymore. They're great plain stuff, just so you know. Uh, local swap meet things like that you could probably find a set but if you're going to build a kit they're invaluable all right guys tails done uh we're using the rudder high mount point there we're making sure that our lower wing our corners are good on our aileron and as we epoxy in the wing tube again we're checking our incidence on our lower wing tilt this way we're at zero on the lower and here we're on the zero so we match um i made a slight adjustment there to make it that way that wing tube if you guys can see that right down in there we're going to lay some epoxy in there so that way that stuff hardens up and uh doesn't move let's get it done a couple things we're going to do here this morning we're going to get the turtle deck sheeting done i've already temporarily fit one side and then we're going to get our gussets fit so we want our gussets to fit around our wing um the back edge of the gusset we want even with the side of the fuse leaving that spar exposed because we'll put a piece in there um, but we have to leave a big enough gap for covering on both of these pieces of material so we got to make sure that's right and then for the turtle deck sheeting what i am going to do is put this back as far as i can and uh, make sure that the lower edge is even with this longer on and then I'm going to use pressure to make an indentation of the wing tube so we know where it sticks through. In this step we're adding that sheeting that we made a little while ago to that turtle deck. Um, I use just a couple sticks so that way I don't have pressure points in the sheeting. Let the sticks um, hold all that pressure right along that very edge. A couple small trim pieces around the wing for dressing. Now we go ahead and we sand off that angle again before we put on the top cap. There's actually um, going to be a, a lot of sanding and shaping here that's necessary, but this is where the plane really starts to look like a plane. All right, guys, tail's done. Look at that. Wah! How awesome. Turtle deck is 99% is done. Lower wing is set. I'm going to set the top off the bottom. In order to do that, I got a gap issue to fix and some sanding to do. Looks like I may be an eighth of an inch or so off with the way I built one of the wings. So we got to fix that. Um, but I'm going to use the wing struts. I'm going to assemble these and put them in place in order to help me position everything on the top so there's no directions you got to drill the bottoms and thread in these inserts which these things are pretty cool i've used these before um, and the way we're going to do this is we know the bottom wing is good so we're going to use that as a reference and what we're going to do is align the back edge of our wing strut with that lower portion of that wing kind of get this one into position where we want it I guess we can take my little made plumb bob out of the way here because that's just causing me some grief right now so we'll get that out of there and we're going to put this into position and I'm going to get myself a two and a half millimeter drill bit to use as a pilot like so and now we're going to position this strut center, but not overlap it into 
the aileron. The aileron needs to be able to move. And from here, once I know it's centered and it's not over into the aileron, we'll go right up through the bottom and drill a pilot. We'll finish drilling my pilot. Be careful you don't go too far through the wing or through the strut. Because you can definitely do that. Alright, now we're going to open that up to the right size, which is 5 mil. Now, I'm doing a temporary install of these um, until everything is fit. Now you're just going to go ahead and thread this in. And then this gives you somewhere to get your bolt to go through the wing and stick into. Now, I'll epoxy those in permanently um, before... I'll epoxy them in permanently before we're done with the total install of this. But for now, this will work good enough. Like I said, I just need these wing struts to be put into place so I can support this upper wing to make measurements so it's not moving all over creation. Once the back one's in, we're going to support with a bolt. Do the pilot now in the front. So check out this bad mamma jamma. So that's enough of this video for this fuselage build. If you want to see how we got it to that point, don't forget to join us for the next continuation episode in the fuselage build or the EMHW build, if you will. And then I'll show you how we got there. So I'm Brendan. This is Just Playing Crazy. You're just playing crazy for always hanging out and watching. I appreciate every single one of you. Do me a favor and check us out on the official Instagram and Facebook Just Playing Crazy pages. Like, share, subscribe, all that cool shameless plug stuff that helps us out a lot if you smash that bad boy if you're gonna hit this one do that twice for me if you will so with that being said um, i wish you guys happy flights peace out